Hello everybody, my name is Annie Bleeker and this is Jarek Stevenson and today we will be sharing our thoughts with you on two artists who we believe have contributed vastly to the development and perception of art. Georges Seurat was born on December 2nd, 1859 in Paris, France. He was a French post-impressionist painter and he died on March 29th, 1891. Seurat's 1886 oil on canvas, A Sunday on La Grande Jatte, is one of the icons of late 19th century painting, and the color theory involved in its making launched the Neo-Impressionist movement. The painting is 6 feet 9 inches by 10 feet and took two years to complete. The color theory involved in this painting's composition is called pointillism, which involves the compartmentalization of colors by hue and then applying them in small dot or line forms. This technique makes works appear blurry and unfinished up close, but complete and detailed from afar. The subject matter of this work is Parisians at leisure. In this work, the figures appear rigid and remote, while other similar Impressionist works of the time have human figures appear more spontaneous and loosely compiled. This is due to the carefully calculated technique of pointillism. Seurat captures what late 19th century public life looked like in Paris on a Sunday, with the coming together of people from various social classes in a public space. Though many of the figures are dressed in their Sunday best, making social distinctions less obvious, the man lounging in the left foreground is believed to be of a lower class than the couple seated to his right. And then the couple standing in the right foreground is believed to be of a higher social class than that seated couple. The most significant facet of this work is the use of pointillism. Pointillism was an extremely calculated and precise technique, and it is truly remarkable to consider that Seurat applied this technique to such a monstrous canvas. Pointillism allows for the entirety of a work to be appreciated from afar which is a similar concept in Christot and Jean-Claude's work, Surrounded Islands, which Jarek will be sharing his thoughts about. Christo was born in Bulgaria on June 13, 1935. His father was a businessman who ran a fabric factory, and his mother was a secretary at the Academy of Fine Arts in Sofia, Bulgaria. Visitors to the Academy know Christo's artistic talent from a young age. Jean-Claude was born in Casablanca, Morocco, where her father was then stationed as a part of the French military. She has the same birthday as her husband, also on June 13, 1935. It is rumored that she and Christo shared a rather interesting courtship. Christo was commissioned to paint a portrait of Jean-Claude's mother, where he was initially attracted to Jean-Claude's older sister, while Jean-Claude was engaged. Shortly before her wedding, Jean-Claude became pregnant by Christo, and they ended up with each other. Christo and Jean-Claude worked predominantly with environmental works. Christo once said of, of his works with Jean-Claude, do you know that I don't have any artworks that exist? They all go in and they're finished. Only the preparatory drawings and collages are left, giving my works an almost legendary character. I think it takes much greater courage to create things that create things to be gone than to create things that will remain. One of these legendary pieces that Crystal speaks of is his and John Claude's surrounding islands in Basque Bay in Miami, Florida. Surrounding Islands was on display for two weeks in May of 1983. In this project, the couple cover 11 small islands in Basque with a floating pink polypropylene creating a type of skirt around the island. It took three years to assemble a competent workforce, acquire all the necessary permits, and raise $3.2 million needed for this project. The purpose of this project, like most of, the, like most of other Christos and John Claude, was to bring awareness to the environment that the project was placed in. According to an article for the New York Times, Christo was influenced by the horizontality of Florida's eastern coastline. He was also struck by a sunset that he saw on his visit to Miami, and the purpose of the pink color on the floating pink fabric was to mirror, that, mirror those that occur in the sky on Florida's summer evenings. Christo also observed that water and land gently intermingle here in Florida, and he wanted to bring an artistic element to, no, to that notion by bringing the colors of the sky into the water. The first observation I would like to make is that both of these works were intended to be viewed from afar. Seurat's use of pointillism makes his work almost unintelligible up close, and the workers who helped lay the fabric for Surrounded Islands said they had absolutely no idea what the end result would look like, but were stunned when they saw the aerial view. Both artists were also revolutionary in their knowledge of perception. Seurat understood how the human eye would observe and process pointillism, and how the details of this technique would allow his works to take shape. Christo and Jean-Claude had a similar understanding of perception. Many of their works employed extremely basic shapes or patterns, yet this seemingly basic image left so much room for viewers to see in their works anything their minds could conjure. 
and oftentimes in this basic shape or pattern there was a complex meaning, message, or process involved. Both well, artworks are environmentally, environmentally inclined as well. I think this is obvious in Christo and Jean-Claude's work. They took a natural space, the islands in Biscayne Bay, and created artwork out of them. The environmental consciousness in Seurat's work is more subtle. Our text states, sunshine fills the picture, but the painter did not break the light into transient patches of color. Light, air, people, and landscape are formal elements in an abstract design. This analysis, I believe, provides us with the insight that both humans and landscape were given equal consideration and weight in the compilation of this work, suggesting that the construction of landscape is every bit as significant as the construction of human figures. We would like to thank you for taking the time to hear our thoughts on these two artists and their works, and we hope you all will now be able to look at the works that may seem simple at first glance and appreciate the detail that goes into its creation.